In this short video, I want to show you guys how we can manipulate images using the module NumPy in Python. So if you want to go ahead and follow along in this tutorial, let me briefly show you which modules you need to have installed to follow along without getting any errors. Over here, I am going to first clear the terminal and I'm going to write in pip list to show you which modules I have installed currently and which ones you need to follow along. First off, you're going to need matplotlib, then you're going to need the module sky kit image, and the third module you'll need is the module numpy. Now, if you do not have one of these uh, modules that I just mentioned a moment ago, the way to install a module in Python is by simply writing pip install, and then you add the name of the module. So if I do this, using the module numpy as an example, you will see that it says for me requirement already satisfied, and that is because I already have the module installed. So if you don't, then go ahead and install these modules and you'll be ready to follow along. The next thing you're going to need is an image um, because after all, we're going to try and manipulate this image. So I've chosen this random image from the internet it shows the Shanghai skyline in a very beautiful way. And this is the one that I'm going to be using. And you can see that in the left hand side, it is in my file structure over here and it's called skyline.jpg. So just bear uh, that in the back of your mind. Okay, so now over here in my editor, I have um, imported a few modules. So first off, I've imported NumPy as NP. And this as NP at the very end over here, it is simply a, yeah, a convention to import NumPy as NP. This means that you don't need to write out NumPy every time you re reference um, this module. You can simply write NP instead. Then we're also going to require the module IO from SkyKit image. And last but not least, we're importing pyplot from matplotlib. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at some basic information that we can get um, using um, uh, our modules, which we have installed. Uh, so yeah, what basic, uh, what basic information can we gather from the image? So in order to gather some information, first we need to get the um, yeah, uh, the, the image into our project. So let's write skyline underscore image. And we're going to set that equal to io dot im read. And then we're going to add the name of the image, which was skyline JPG. All right, now we have the image in our project. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to check what data type this image actually has. So we're going to write print, then type. And in parentheses, we're going to add the skyline image, which we've just added into our project. If I go ahead and run this, you can see on the right hand side in the terminal output, it says that this skyline image over here <coughs> has the class numpy um, nd array. So we are working with an nd array. And uh, that is very convenient because working with ND arrays is very, very nice and easy. Okay, so we know what type this skyline image is, what data type it has. Let's try to find out a little bit more about the shape of this image. So how many rows it has and how many columns and so on. So in order to do that, we can write print, then skyline image dot shape. And if I now run this, you'll see I get three numbers in the console output. Now, what do these numbers mean? So we have a 626 by 960 image. If I go to the um, project file tree and open the image, you can even see in the top right hand corner over here, it says 960 uh, by 626. So these are the dimensions of the image that we're getting over here. But then there is another number that we get, this three in the end. And this three is quite interesting because it tells us how many channels, how many color channels this image has. And since we have an RGB 
um, image over here. Um, so we have three color channels, one for red, one for um, blue, and one for green. So that is why we get this three at the very end. Okay, so now that we know this basic information, it would be interesting to, for example, get the RGB values of a specific pixel in our image. And in order to do that, we can, for example, write print and then write skyline image. And in square brackets, we can write the coordinates of the pixel whose information we want to retrieve. So if we look at the top leftmost pixel, um, we can write 0, 0. And then when I run this, you will see that we get this array over here, 48, 30, and 28. Looking at this for the very first time, it might not be that obvious what exactly this is, but let me clear the confusion because if we go into the project, then go to the skyline image and zoom to the top uh, leftmost pixel on this image. So this is the top leftmost pixel. And if I take the color picker and then choose this pixel, you will see that the values re we receive over here are identical to the values that we have in our terminal output. So we have an R value of 48, a green value of 30, and a blue value of 28. So all that we get um, by looking at a specific pixel is the RGB values. And we don't necessarily need to do this for the top leftmost pixel. We can take any pixel that is in the image. So if, for example, we decided we want to take the information from the bottom right most um, pixel, then we can write in two, uh, 6, 2, 5, and then 9, 5, 9. And this will give us the information of the pixel, which is in the bottom right corner. So just to prove that again to you guys, if I go to the um, project file tree again, and we go to the pixel, which is in the bottom right corner, and I pick it out just like this, then you'll see that the numbers correspond to what we have in the terminal output on the right hand side. Okay, so that's how we can obtain the RGB values. Now, another thing that we would want to be able to do is we want to be able to display an image. So how do we do that? In order to display an image, we first need to plot it and then we need to show it graphically. To plot it, we need to write plt.imshow and then we pass in the image which we want to plot, which is going to be the skyline image. And after we've done that, so maybe let me run this uh, one time. So just to show you guys that at this stage, we don't get any image shown yet, but it's been plotted. It's just not visible yet. What you need to do next is you need to show the plot. So we're going to write plt.show. And now that you're showing the plot, you'll see that we get an, an, a small pop-up and it shows us the image. So that is exactly how you can display the image. The next thing I want to show you is how we can change a pixel on our image. So to do that, first we're going to get rid of this code. And what we're going to do is we're going to first reference one pixel. Specifically, we're going to take the pixel in the very top left. So that is the pixel we looked at earlier when we um, had this line of code over here. And at the moment, we know that the pixel in the top left has this RGB value. Now we want to change it, and we want to change it to the color white. And the color white in RGB values is 255, 255, 255. So I've um, put this in here. And if I now go ahead and take this code, which shows us the image, but put it after the mm, a change of the pixel and run it, then you will see that I get this image. And at the moment, it looks just like it did a moment ago. But what happens if I zoom in into this very top corner? You can see that the top pixel, which is exactly the one that we referenced, 
because it has the coordinate 0, 0, is now not the original color that it was earlier, which was this. It now has the color white, which was the color we assigned. And of course, again, we don't necessarily need to change the top, um, the pixel in the top left corner. We can choose another pixel. For example, let's choose the pixel at the very bottom right again. So I'm just choosing these two pixels because they're easy to find on the image. Um, but yeah, let me go ahead and rerun this again. And once I do, then you'll see that we have the image. And now I can go ahead and zoom in into the bottom right corner. And you can see that the bottom right corner pixel has also been changed to white, which is what the second line over here does. So now we've learned how to manipulate individual pixels, but how about we try and manipulate the image as a whole and let's try to crop the image first. So let's say that we don't want to show the entire image. We only want to show a section of the image. And one way to do that is to uh, write something along the lines of uh, skyline image underscore cut. And we're going to set this equal to the skyline image. But then in square brackets, we're going to write 300 to 500 and 400 to 500. Now, instead of displaying the skyline image, we want to display the skyline image cut. And if I go ahead and run this, you'll be able to see that we have the rows going from zero to 200 and that means we're displaying the pixels uh, 300 to 500 from the original image and then going along the bottom we have columns we have exactly 100 of them because we've only decided to display the pixels 400 to 500 from the original image as you can see over here so that is exactly how you can crop uh, an image that where you don't want to show the whole image you only want to show a section of it. There are of course many other things that we can do and one thing that comes to my mind is drawing an image upside down. So let's try and do that. In order to show an image upside down, let's first get rid of this code over here. And let me give you a bit of background before we do it. So when we want to re uh, draw an image upside down, all we need to do is we need to reverse the rows and the order in which they're shown. Of course, when you draw an image upside down, you're drawing the last row first and the first row last. So how do we reverse the order of an array? Let me give you an example. We're gonna write array A, and this array is going to have, it's going to be a NumPy n dimensional array which has the numbers one, two, three. And we're gonna print out this array. And in addition to that, we're also going to print out the uh, array which is in inverse order. And to do that in square brackets, we simply need to write colon, colon minus one. And if I go ahead and print this or execute this, you can see I get two additional uh, outputs over here. I get the original array that we created over here. And in addition to that, I get the reversed one, which we created over here. So we can use the same principle to draw an image, which is um, being inverted. So let's go ahead and write skyline image, and then we're gonna call it upside down. And we're going to set it equal to the skyline image but this time we're going to write colon, colon, minus one, comma, colon, colon. And then after that, we are going to write PLT, which is short for plot, dot I am show. So we're going to go ahead and plot this skyline image upside down. And in addition to that, we then want to PLT show. Now, if I go ahead and run this, you'll see that the image, which we're going to receive over here, is being shown up 
upside down. Now, how about we try not only show it upside down, but we try and show it uh, mirrored. So the right side is going to be the left and the left side is going to be the right. All we need to do to do that is we need to add a minus one over here. And then if I go ahead and execute it again, you'll see that not only is the image being shown um, upside down, but the right hand side is now the left and the left hand side is now the right. And the very last thing that I want to show you in this video is how we can invert the colors of an image. In order to do that, it is remarkably easy. We're first going to think of a new variable name. We're going to call it inverted skyline image image. And we're going to set it equal to 255, which is the maximum value which an RGB value can have. And then from that, we're going to subtract the skyline image. So we can, after that, go ahead and write um, these two lines of code over here. So we're going to then take this inverted skyline image and we're going to plot it. And if I go ahead and press run now, you'll see that the image I get has its colors inverted. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. I hope that you learned something. If this video helped you out, then leave a comment for the algorithm and give this video a thumbs up so more people see it. See you in the next one.